I want to speak about unwavering hope. Unwavering hope. So let's turn in our Bibles to Hebrews 10, verse 23. The scriptures will appear on the screen when you need them. It says in Hebrews 10, verse 23, it says this. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. Amen? It says, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. There are some key words in that verse that I just want to draw out. So I'm talking about unwavering hope. How do we have unwavering hope? We understand two things. That number one, God has given us promises. And number two, God is faithful. Unwavering hope comes from God. It's something that the Holy Spirit puts in our hearts. And it comes from knowing that God has given us great and precious promises. It speaks about that in 1 Peter 1 verse 4. Great and precious promises. But not only that, but God is faithful to his promises. There is nothing that God is not faithful with when it comes to what he has spoken to us. Nothing can change what God has said, and nothing can change um, that God is faithful to carry out his word. Can I hear an amen? amen? Nothing changes those things. If our experience in this world seems to contradict the promise of God, the word of God, or the faithfulness of God, then we've got to establish in our hearts that there's no issue with God's promise, and there's no issue with God's faithfulness. Amen? Amen. The moment we turn away from God, you know, when we find ourselves in a crisis, in a storm, and if our response is to turn away from God, declaring that God's word has failed, or that God's been unfaithful to us, that is the moment we lose hope. Yet, we can stand with unwavering hope when we run to God, when we run to God, when we turn to God, who is our refuge, knowing that his promise remains and his faithfulness never changes. Amen? So I want to read from Hebrews 6, verses 18 and 19. This is from the New Living Translation. It says this. Just listen to these words. Just try and take them in as, as, I, as I share these words. So it says, So God has given both his promise and his oath. Now when a person makes an oath, they're saying basically that they, they will carry out what they said they would do. Okay, so this speaks of God's faithfulness. So God has given us both his promise and his oath. These two are unchangeable because it's impossible for God to lie. Therefore, we who have fled to him for refuge, because we're not those that run from God when things don't go the way we want them to or the way we expect. We're those who flee to God for refuge. We can have great confidence as we hold to the hope that lies before us, this unwavering hope. And this hope, this unwavering hope that we have because of the promise and the faithfulness of God is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. Amen. It's a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. It leads us through the curtain into God's inner sanctuary. I love that. I love that. So our responsibility is to hold on to hope and be unwavering in our hope. How do we do that? We establish the truth that God's promise remains and that God is totally faithful and never lets us down. The unwavering hope that we have in God, this unwavering hope we have because of his promise, because of his faithfulness, causes us to stand strong and unmovable in the greatest storms of life. Now, I don't know what storms you've been through. I think I've probably been with people in a lot of storms, and I'm thankful that I don't feel that I've been through a lot of uh, heavy storms myself.
But nothing, nothing that I've ever been through, no storm I've ever been through, has caused my hope in God to waver. Yeah, I've asked questions, and I've, I've asked for answers, haven't always got the answers, but nothing changes the promise of God and the faithfulness of God. So, this hope is an anchor in our lives. This anchor doesn't just keep us steady in the midst of the storms, but we just read something there at the end of that verse. If you could put verse 19 back on the screen there. It says, this hope is the strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. So when you see yourself in the middle of storms, hope, the hope that we have in God is the anchor that keeps us steady and stable in the midst of the storms. But then it says, it leads us through the curtain into God's inner sanctuary. You see, what happens is when we have unwavering hope in God, it pulls us into the presence of God out of the storm. It pulls us through that curtain, and Jesus made the way for us to stand in the presence of God and be close to God. And it pulls us into that place where God is able to put his arms all around us and hold us. And sometimes when you've been through storms, or even in the middle of storms, you just need to let that anchor pull you into the sanctuary of God and find strength in him. Amen? Psalm 23, verse 4. It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that may be, it is for some today, a literal valley. For others, it's other things that are going on in your life. But the truth is that we fear no evil because we know that God is with us. God is with us. Our good shepherd is with us. We have unwavering hope because we are his sheep and he is speaking to us. And we hear the voice of the good shepherd. And we know that he is faithful to lead us where he is telling us he will take us. Amen. So again, we're talking about his promise and his faithfulness. The good shepherd is faithful to us. Amen. And also, according to Psalm 23, the verses prior to verse 4, these aren't on the screen, but when my soul is damaged by the storm, the good shepherd, what he does is he makes me to lie down in green pastures and he leads me beside still waters. And then what does it say? And he restores my soul. So hope is the anchor of the soul. The unwavering hope that we have in God, it keeps us steady in the middle of the storm. But when the storm rages, when, it, when, when the, the waves beat up against our, our lives, the, 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 the ship that is our soul that we're talking about right now, and damage is done, we go and take sanctuary in the presence of God. And the word of God says, beside those still waters... He restores our soul. He repairs any damage that is done in the middle of the storm. Praise God. Praise God. So when the kingdom of darkness rages all around us, tries to destroy us, yes, we fight the good fight of faith. We rebuke the storm. We stand strong in God's promise. We know that he is faithful. We are unmovable in the, in the storm. But then we take refuge in the very presence of God. Because that's where that hope, that anchor leads us ultimately. We cling to him as he restores our soul. Making us ready to sail again. With the unwavering hope in the promises and the faithful of, faithfulness of God. And that's what God wants to do. Maybe in your life today, God wants to restore your soul. He wants you to find sanctuary in him. And you've been looking, you've been in the storm and the storm has passed. And you're sitting there thinking, oh, I feel totally battered. Um, because you've forgotten to, to take hold of that anchor and, and let it pull you into the presence of God. You've got to do that because otherwise you won't be able to fight the next battle. Because there will be more storms that come. Lamentations 3 verses 22 to 20, actually 26. You probably haven't got all of those verses. 
Through the Lord's mercies, we were not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I hope in him. You see again, great is his faithfulness. He's our portion. Therefore, we hope in him. Amen. And verses 25 and 26, which won't be on the screen, they say, The Lord is good to those who wait for him, the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. And again, this is talking about finding that place of refuge in God. There is so much that I don't understand about life in this world. I see people doing terrible things, and I see the devil, who is a very real being, on a rampage to destroy people's lives, especially those who are bringing glory to God through their lives. That's his greatest target. I see storms raging all over the place, doing great damage. But that is the world we live in, and people have free will, and the devil actually at this time has free reign. Yet, as a child of God, there is a promise over my life. And over those who have put their faith in Jesus. If you know Jesus as your saviour, then truly he is saviour. And he is Lord, not the devil, not Satan, not the kingdom of darkness. You've stepped into a new kingdom, amen? And you're under the rules of that kingdom now. And Jesus made, said some words and made a promise over my life and over your life. And this is what he said in John 10 verse 10. He said, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. That's not the promise. That's the fact. But Jesus said this. He said, I have come that they, in other words, all who believe in me, all who become children of God, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So, my conclusion is that I choose to trust God and I will sail strong into his purpose for my life with unwavering hope, knowing that the promise remains and his faithfulness never changes. And I want to encourage you today, no matter what you face in life, no matter what storm you are going through or have been through, determine that you will sail with unwavering hope into the purpose of God for your life, knowing that God's promise remains and his faithfulness never changes. Amen. So when the storms come, I will keep sailing, determined to gain victory over every evil scheme of the devil who is there to steal and to kill and destroy. I've had enough of it. Yet, if I do suffer damage in any storms, and sometimes we suffer damage, and whether they're my own storms or whether, whether they're other people's, because I understand that we weep with those that weep, and we rejoice with those who rejoice. Amen? So if I do suffer any damage in any storms, I will do two things. The first thing that I will do is I will run to God, who is my refuge. I will cling tightly to him. I will wait on the Lord so that my strength is renewed. I will expect beauty to come from ashes. And I will know that I serve the God who redeems broken things. Amen. And he makes all things new. And that is the first thing that I will do. I will run to him. Psalm 42 verse 11 says this. Why, my soul, are you downcast? This is David speaking to himself here. Why are you downcast? Why are you so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. So David was, was getting himself in line with what he needed to do here. Why so downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God. 
I hope you're hearing this today. Put your hope in God, unwavering hope in God. And I will praise him, my Savior and my God. And the second thing that I will do, I will run to God. And the second thing that I will do if I experience any damage from any storm in life is I will tenaciously rebuke every storm that comes my way. Being unmoved in my faith, in the promises of God, because the promises of God in Christ, in my life, and in yours, if you're a Christian today, are yes and amen. And also knowing that he is ready to perform his word. It says that in, I, in Jeremiah uh, 1 verse 12, I'm ready to perform my word. And knowing that no matter what storm is going on, Jesus came to bring life in abundance. So I just want to finish with, with Hebrews 10 verse 35. And the reason I'm finishing a bit early today is because we're going to give you the opportunity to be prayed for this morning. Um, and I'll talk about that in just a moment. So I'm going to run to God. And I'm going to tenaciously rebuke every storm that comes my way. And Hebrews 10 verse 35 says this. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence which has great reward. And I believe that in this life, we see some of that reward sometimes. But I also believe with all my heart that in the life to come, there is great reward for being faithful. Faithfulness to God. So God is faithful to us, and our responsibility is to be faithful to him, to have that unwavering hope in him. And as we do, God is the God that in this life promotes, in this life rewards, but in the life to come, there is great reward in heaven as well. And we need to see things in that light, uh, not see things from a kind of, of uh, now and an earthly point of view all the time, but actually see that God is an eternal God. And this is just a, a tiny blip in, in the light of, of our eternal life with God. I'm so glad that I received Jesus and accepted him as my savior and have started this eternal life with God. But I know, um, as Grace knew, that when I close my eyes and I leave this earth, I open my eyes in heaven. There is a resurrection to come. And in that resurrection, all who are Christ's live for eternity with God in his heavenly kingdom. Praise God. And that's the first thing I want to say really as I close now is do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Because if you don't, um, in this life, I don't really know what you have hope in. You know, there is no hope without Jesus as your Savior and your Lord. Uh, and the reason why you can have complete hope when you know Jesus as your Savior is because you're made right with God. And in that sense, whatever goes on in this world in your life, good or bad, one thing you can know for sure is that God's hand is upon your life and he has a purpose and he has a future for you in this world and an incredible, eternal, glorious future. Um, so if you've never said yes to Jesus... If you've never said, Jesus, I believe that when you died on the cross, you took my sin so that the punishment for all of my wrongdoing could be taken and paid so that I could be made acceptable in the sight of God. If you've never said, God, I want to put all that stuff behind me. I want to turn away from that stuff and I want to live for you. I want to live this life for you, God. Then today is the day to do that. I'm going to pray a prayer. And if you've never received Jesus as your Savior and your Lord, if you've never said this prayer before, then please close your eyes, bow your heads, and repeat these words after me. So do that now, please. Just cl Everyone close your eyes and bow your heads and say these words. Say, Dear Father, all together, okay? So say, Dear Father, I'm sorry for the things that I've done wrong in my life. I thank you for sending Jesus to pay the price for my sin. I believe that you forgive me and you make me new. I surrender to you and ask you to be the Lord of my life. Fill me with your spirit. 
and empower me to live a life that honors you. Thank you for loving me. Amen. Amen.